What's going on, everybody? Jeff Holiday here, and today I have another really sad story for you. I'm really sorry. I apologize. But uh, you guys do keep coming back for them, so I guess I'll keep making them. And also, I think it's very important that we are aware these types of things happen. Now, you might be previously familiar with the cases of, uh, for instance, the Genesis 2 bleach cult trying to promote a bunch of bleach cures in places like Africa. Well, unfortunately, it's not just isolated to a bunch of weird wackadoos believing that if you force children to drink bleach or squirt bleach up their, their bottoms, that you can magically cure things. It's not just that. Oh, no. Unfortunately, the problem is much more widespread than that. Now, I was first introduced to this story through this article on NPR. American with no medical training ran center for malnourished Ugandan kids. 105 died. And I'm going to read just a little bit, and then we'll move on with how this story actually developed. Ten years ago, Renee Bach left her home in Virginia to set up a charity to help children in Uganda. One of her first moves was to start a blog chronicling her experiences. Among the most momentous, on a Sunday morning in October 2011, a couple from a village some distance away showed up at Bach Center carrying a small bundle. When I pulled the covering back, my eyes widened, Bach wrote in the blog. For under the blanket lay a small but very, very swollen pale baby girl. Her breasts are frighteningly slow. The baby's name is Patricia. She is nine months old. Bach went on to write that Patricia had fallen sick three weeks earlier, but her parents had been able to find anyone closer to home who could cure her. Then, wrote Bach, one of their relatives told me about a hospital with a white doctor. Except Bach was not a doctor. She was a 20-year-old high school graduate with no medical training. And not only was her center not a hospital, at the time, it didn't employ a single doctor. Yet from 2010 through 2015, Bach says, she took in 940 severely malnourished children and 105 of them died. And now she's being sued. So the background for Renee Bach was that she was a Christian missionary and went to Uganda. She spent 10 months there and she started seeing that there was definitely a plight of starving and malnourished children there. So she decided that she, when she would return back to the States, uh, start up a, a charity, a nonprofit in which she could go over there and try and assist. And it seemed fine at first. She started the, the nonprofit Serving His Children, obviously with a very specific religious bent towards Christianity, with the intention of basically providing free meals. That was what they were trying to do. And then it started branching into doing a little bit of medical treatment. But again, like it was stated previously, she didn't employ any actual medical staff before she started trying to treat children. And it gets even worse. The court documents obtained by ABC News detail a litany of complaints against Bach and serving his children, with statements from two mothers whose children died, as well as affidavits from former employees and volunteers. Among the allegations against Bach are performing medical procedures, such as blood transfusions and inserting intravenous catheters, disregarding sanitary protocols, and attempting to diagnose patients who showed symptoms frequently related to serious illnesses like HIV and AIDS. And her pretendy role-playing of being a doctor was so constant that a former volunteer actually said in a sworn affidavit that she would walk around in a white lab coat with a stethoscope, and pretty much everybody in the village knew her as the white doctor. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is from Fox News when uh, she went on to defend herself. A Christian missionary is fighting to clear her name tonight following accusations by two mothers in Uganda and a group called No White Saviors that the Virginia woman contributed to the deaths of, they say, hundreds of babies by treating them without a medical license at her nonprofit charity clinic called Serving His Children. That missionary, Renee Bach, joins us now to tell her side of the story along with her attorney, David Gibbs. Uh, Renee and David, thanks for joining us. I just, I, I kind of want to point this out. Um, she looks pretty much exactly like how someone should look when they realize they've probably killed over a hundred children. Yeah, you, you, you actually probably should look like you kind of want the world to beat you to death. Yeah, you should probably feel exactly like that, and uh, I, I appreciate that, so thank you. Happy to be with you, Shannon. 
Okay, I want to. Thanks, wanna, Shannon. It's I, good to be here. I want to read from Women's Pro Bono Initiative. They're one of the plaintiffs joining with these two mothers. They say the mothers allege they were led to believe that Miss Renee Bach was a medical doctor and that her home was a medical facility, as she was often seen wearing a white coat, a stethoscope, and often administered medications to children in her care. The actions of Renee and SHC led to the death of hundreds of children. Renee, that is a serious allegation. How do you respond? Um, so, first off, I have never represented myself as a medical professional or health worker of any type. Um, the organization serving his children hires uh, medical professionals that are Ugandan, um, local and national folks. Now, they hire them now. In fact, if we go and we look right now at serving his children, well, uh, suspiciously... Renee isn't on there anymore, and instead it's nothing but a bunch of, well, Ugandan workers, which is good, because hopefully that means this crazy woman is staying far, far away from these children. And um, I have assisted our medical team in emergency settings and in crisis situations, um, but I have never practiced medicine, and I have never adorned uh, or put on any sort of a uniform or white coat for that matter. Um, so, yeah, it's a tough allegation for sure. I mean, like, like one more time. Say it one more time for me. Um, but I have never practiced medicine, and I have never adorned uh, or put on any sort of a uniform or white coat for that matter. Um, so, yeah, it's a tough allegation for sure. So just because you might not be wearing a white lab coat, which I, I bet you there are probably pictures of you in a white lab coat. I'm just, I'm just going to bet that there probably are. Uh Having a stethoscope, I mean, that kind of implies that you know what you're doing. Whether or not you have a name tag that says Dr. Renee Bach or not, if somebody is coming into a clinic, and it's called a clinic, and they hand you their baby, and you put on a stethoscope and start listening to the baby, they're probably going to assume that you know what you're doing. I don't think that's a very hard leap of logic. So, David, I know that you have said um, you believe this group is potentially defaming her. Uh, they may be libelous and slandering her. Would you consider uh, legal action in return? Do you think your case is strong enough? Well, Shannon, absolutely the case would be strong enough. Now, the problem with these reputational terrorists on the Internet is even finding these people. All over reputational terrorists on the internet keep that in mind the two people who are suing her are two ugandan mothers whose children died in her care the allegations that are also being being brought forth is from another group, and this group is also a nonprofit which has a lot of interaction with people in Uganda. In fact, they have a very interesting story about Renee, but reputational terrorists, reputational terrorists. I mean, fuck, dude. Look, I know it's kind of inconvenient when your kid dies. <laughs> That's no reason to go in and, 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 and assassinate someone's character who was taking care of your kid when they died. That just seems completely unreasonable, don't you think? Now, real quick, before we get to the allegations levied by no white saviors, real quick, I wanted to make mention of this. Uh, Bach allegedly learned medical procedures by reading and watching YouTube videos. So, like, just, 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 just bask in this one. The organization No White Savers has accused Bach providing children with medical treatment she learned by watching YouTube videos. The group claims that Bach took children from legitimate hospitals and medical centers for treatment at uh, SHC and was very open about how much she enjoyed providing hands-on medical care. In a blog post that since been removed from the SHC website, Bach wrote about how she cared for a sick infant named Patricia. I hooked the baby up to oxygen and got to work. As I took her temperature, started an IV, checked her blood sugar, tested for malaria, and looked at her HB account, her family began to tell me her story. Witnesses claimed to have seen Bach perform a number of procedures, including drawing blood, prescribing medications, giving intravenous injections, inserting catheters, and administering oxygen. Former colleagues said she answered to Musawo, the Lugandan word for doctor. When asked how she was basing treatments, she told one former assistant that she referred to where there is no doctor, a village healthcare handbook. So not only do you have her in her own blog posts, 
saying that she is providing medical care for children. But you have many witness accounts of saying, yeah, she was, she was acting like a doctor. And then there's this. Initially, I admired Renee for her sacrifice and tireless commitment to helping children battling malnutrition. It was not until January 2014 that my perspective really started to change. There was a child referred to our center who had previously been at serving his children. He and his grandmother stayed with us for several months while he received much-needed medical care. The day after we had received some good news about his heart condition, he died of a sudden heart attack. His three-year-old body had been through a great deal of stress and it had finally given out. We found out that this little boy had suffered a severe case of malnutrition and was brought to Renee's NGO in Masese. They got him fat and healthy and then sent him home without so much as any consideration for the root cause of his malnutrition. There was no follow-up, so he fell sick again. So sick that his body was not able to come back from it this time. Renee and her social worker at the time came to our office to discuss this case. As I made it clear, I held her partially responsible for this child's death. I explained that she had training or experience in child welfare. Uh, she'd know how critical it is to follow up on cases like this. I was frustrated at that point, but all I was asking was that Renee and her team do better follow-up moving forward to prevent kids from falling through the cracks and ending up right back where they started. It was soon after this that my concern moved to terror as I learned that the poor follow-up procedures were far from the most dangerous thing happening at serving his children. It was reported that by multiple parties that Renee was actively practicing medicine on children that came to the center. She had medical professionals on staff, but she herself with no medical training chose to actively treat and respond to serious medical needs of children in crisis. So you have this very young girl who decides at a very young age that she wants to start a nonprofit to try and help battle malnutrition in Africa, which would be totally fine and very noble of a cause. But the problem is, and this is far too often the case, a lot of people who do this fall into, and it's going to sound a little weird, white savior complex. Now, I don't say that lightly, and I will make my case for why I think that's, that's, that's the case in this very specific instance in just a moment. But when you believe that you are, for some reason, on the side of angels and are doing the absolute 100% completely perfect correct thing to do, you can make some serious fucking mistakes. And then, people die. Now here's the thing, you saw that clip and she was saying, well, I never tried to say that I was a medical professional. Well, of course she says that now, because now she's in trouble. The gravity of the situation where she might have helped contribute to the deaths of over a hundred children is now finally starting to weigh down upon her white savior fucking complex brow. Oh, but she was, she, she left it to the trained medical professionals. Now I'm about to show you something and it's going to make you really fucking mad. So if you need to, you can just nope out of this video. It's totally fine. I'm not going to hold it against you, but I think you'll for the most part be able to understand exactly what the point of this was, and you'll be okay without watching it. But this is the only time I'm going to mention it, because this next picture is going to piss you off. Ready? But of course not, Renee. Of course. How in the world could anybody ever come to the conclusion that you were a medical professional? How, how in the world could anybody have come to that conclusion? That's just, that's ridiculous. Weird. The idea that somebody who has no idea how, how, to, how to perform medicine at all, no schooling, no accreditation, no, no actual hands-on training by a medical professional at all, and then you do this? Is it because it's in Africa that it's okay? Is that why? Maybe I'm reading a bit too much into it. Maybe she really didn't fall into the white savior complex. Maybe, you know. But then it's kind of odd that then she would pose for a picture like this. You know, just, it, it's, a, it's a, it's a, this is a little strange, don't you think? You know? By the way, um, <clears throat> that's her posing in a room uh, in her clinic, and all of those photos are pictures of sick children that were brought to her clinic. I don't know why anybody would ever think that she had a white savior complex. Isn't that... 
I'm probably just reading a little bit too much into it, don't you think? Hmm. This is not the first instance of this kind of thing happening, and it will not be the last. Anytime some random jackass who wants to have some sort of savior complex go over to a place that is in desperate need of help, people who will who will claw through the fucking dirt and they will they will they will throw everything they have at you. Please, for the love of God, save my baby. There will always be people who see that and either see dollar signs or they see that ooh, intoxicating feeling of power because they are there to save you. <laughs> I, these, the people like this, people like Rene Bach, they're evil. They're vile. And I, I hope uh, she has to suffer for what she has done. It's disgusting. It's dishonest. And uh, in this day and age, it should never have to happen. But it is what it is. Anyway, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Sorry if I uh, just uh, dropped in to depress you real quick, but I'm pretty sure the title of this video probably warned you away and you knew what you were getting into. At least I hope so. Um, thank you so much for your time and your attention. From my family to yours, I hope yours is well. I hope you are well. I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.